today we're, we, the track uh, that you'll hear after this is a discussion around uh, air and missile defense and, and, it's, and, it's, uh, and it's, um, its stance here in NATO as well as in, in Europe. And one of the big components of that system is a, uh, a software and hardware solution called IBCS, Integrated Air and Missile Defense Battle Command System. Uh, and I'm going to talk, kind of walk through my briefing here, and it'll, it'll describe the history and how and why this was the, this is the number one priority for the U.S. Army as it relates to air and missile defense. So I think we can all agree in today's world, it's a, it's a much more complex environment than it was 30 years ago. Uh, today, the, co the threat is, uh, the number of quantity of, of uh, threats are out there from an adversary. The quality of the, the threat is significant and then the diversity of the threat is significant. So no longer are we looking for that one inbound uh, object to, to fire at. Now it's a multitude of threats coming from different places, different capabilities, and different countries. Uh, as you know, here in Poland, uh, you, you're significantly under, you're always under that uh, concern and threat of your adversaries in the region. Uh, so 30 years ago, the threat was fairly simple. And at that time, there was a, there was a uh, disruptive system that was developed called Patriot. And that system was very effective. It's a, it's a great uh, system and still is today. It's one of the most effective uh, capabilities that the U.S. Army has in its inventory to protect against integrated air and missile defense. Uh, but as the threat evolves, as I mentioned, the U.S. Uh, the US decided we can't, uh, we can't rely on a single integrated sensor and shooter. Today, the Patriot system is a closed system and it, it operates based on one sensor, one effector. So the, the U.S. Army decided to move out on, a, on an expedition to uh, identify a system or capability that was also disruptive to fight the fight in the future. So as, as the concept evolved, they wanted to make use of all the assets on the battlefield, regardless of the sensor, the domain that the sensor lived in, wherever it existed in the battlefield, they wanted to have access to that sensor and integrate it and tie it back and, and allow the best effect to take place, whether the effect was an intercept, a physical, or a non-physical effect. So this was the problem set that we were, we were, we were selected. Northrop Grumman was selected by the U.S. Army to develop this disruptive technology. Uh, we, came we came across this problem set to, to adjust to, and the most important part was the disruption, not only in, from an adversary perspective, but also in the market. So what did we come up with? We came up with our Integrated Air Missile Defense Battle Command System. This system is an open architected system. It's evolutionary as it relates to the way we do business today in the U.S., the way we fight and the way we train our soldiers today. Uh, today, we've, we've had successful flight tests. We're on, on track to deliver the system by 2022. And we're also, uh, we've also just completed two soldier checkout events, both in Yuma and uh, with the U.S. Marine Corps and, and the Air Force. So that, that, that we'll have a uh, press release releasing over the next couple of days around that. But it's been, it, the results have been phenomenal. So what did IBCS do? Uh, first, we started out with the Patriot system. As I said, revolutionary 30 years ago. It, it, it does exactly what it's meant to do, which is fight that single threat. Uh, what we wanted to do is ensure that if we were to lose a sensor or a, or a shooter on the battlefield, we're able to st stay up and running and, be effect and effectively defend the territory that we, we've, uh, we're, we're um, defending. So we dis dissected the, the Patriot uh, system. We removed the command and control. This was the legacy command and control system in, in Patriot. Uh, we effectively removed that and disassembled it into components. So now on the battlefield, each sensor and effector is an individual node on the network. Now we have access, regardless of what the, what the system, where the system resides and what branch of service it resides in, we have access to that system. So we integrated what we called the IBCS modern, uh, Modernized Open System Architecture. In phase one of your VSWA program, you will receive two batteries, four fire units with an IBCS node. There's a lot of builds here. Enabling you to use essentially any effect or any sensor on the battlefield. As you move into phase two, you're not limited to just US-based inventory. Our goal is to in integrate Polish indigenous sensors in phase two into IBCS and make, make use of those, those systems. So as we go forward and, and eventually to a phase three, you're not beholden to one set of one company, one country, one industry to deliver those sensors or shooters. We have, we have the ability to integrate fairly, pretty much any sensor or shooter today. 
So this is a, an example. So I, I, will, I will try out, I had a very short spot here, but I will try out my Polish. Uh, I think uh, one of the speakers said this morning, uh, in order for you to have pokia, we have to be prepared for Voina. But I think you have to be well prepared for Voina by having the, the most state-of-the-art system that's out there today. So thank you for your time, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak.